Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my fellow citizens from Randolph County. We're beginning our uh, seventh week of providing these programs to you. This will be our 13th broadcast uh, in this series of videos to keep you, the public, informed of uh, the process and those things that are involved in dealing with the COVID-19 crisis. Um, our numbers continue to go up. Uh, we have uh, 255 this morning, and you'll hear some more about that from Susan. I did want to just say a couple of comments, and I think most of what I say today is going to be from a personal standpoint relative to, um, to my role and my fellow commissioner's role as uh, representing you on the Board of County Commissioners. We had a pretty weekend, beautiful weekend. I got my tomato plants in the ground and uh, looking for the warm sunshine to cause them to grow, have some tomatoes and some cucumbers and squash a little later this summer. Uh, Sunday afternoon we had the prayer service down at the county courthouse uh, from the car count 400 plus uh, probably well over a thousand people that were in attendance for that prayer service I want to say a, a great thank you to the ministers who organized that and uh, brought that to us the, the music was wonderful beautiful songs uh, the talent that was exhibited there and uh, we're certainly grateful and I know not just on Sunday afternoon but I know those folks are praying for us every day um, and that's an important thing and that's sort of where I want to go with this today um, I've been serving you for a long time and in that time I've made a lot of decisions I don't know probably the votes I've cast would be in the several thousand uh, most of those have been fairly routine um, we looked at how much money we're going to put in a budget for our public schools for the sheriff for our departments and agencies and the requests that they bring uh, we had a decision to build this 911 call center here uh, build schools we had to expand the jail how much money do we spend on the mega site those decisions that are made we look at zoning decisions those zoning decisions um, affect basically a community there's always one side in favor and a side that's opposed we deal with it we make our decisions and we go forward and the rest of the county hardly knows uh, what took place but here all of a sudden a few weeks ago we wake up one morning and we're in the middle it's not just started it, it, we're in the middle of a pandemic before some even we even know the definition of the word and we've been confronted that with that on that basis and just emergencies almost every day since then and uh, even the simple thing of going to the grocery store has taken on a whole new experience uh, you can't buy a pound of hamburger somewhere you can't get a bottle of Clorox not to mention the tissues issue uh, but this issue affects every single citizen young and old and every quadrant and center of this county every day uh, whether you are part of a family that might be affected by the illness but is, has affected your lifestyle our children are out of school um, and those matters are growing weary on our citizens and we understand that and um, with that those comments in place um, a sort of a motto of mine uh, a verse of scripture that I want to share with you this morning but sort of uh, set the background for that if you're familiar in any way with the history of Israel you know there came a time in Israel's, Israel's life when they wanted a king like everybody else they wanted a king to rule and so first one was Saul and then there was King David and from the time that David slew Goliath as a 12 year old kid he, he was the hero but David served his years and his son Solomon was set to become to succeed him as the king of Israel and if you are familiar with scripture you know God said to Solomon ask what you want and I'll give it to you and this is the words that Solomon said this was what his response to God and it's found in first Kings the third chapter and the ninth verse really the set that starts with verse 7 but this is what he said okay God give therefore thy servant 
an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? That has been a motto of mine and has directed my life in all the years that I've been honored and privileged to serve you on this Board of County Commissioners. And what Solomon was saying, I want wisdom. I don't know what's good and what's bad. I want you to give me wisdom that I might know the difference. Of course, we know the, the old story that we're all familiar with, the two ladies that came to Solomon one day, claim, both claiming to be the mother of the same child. And Solomon took the sword and said, well, he just cut the baby in two. And of course, the real mother said, no, you let the baby live. But he had that wisdom and presence about him. But he asked at that time, what would we ask for um, in our life? And that's what I asked for. There's more and bigger decisions yet to come in this process. Um, back in the early 1800s, uh, Alexandrina Victoria, at the age of 18, became the Queen of England, Queen Victoria. At the age of 18, she would go on to serve for 63 years until her death in 1901. Her reign as the Queen of the British Empire included its greatest growth in scientific and cultural issues, the Industrial Revolution, the military, all of those things in England, it's greatest time even today, even to today. But on June the 20th of 1837, at her coronation, the Archbishop of Canterbury read this verse of scripture at her coronation. Give this lady the wisdom and the understanding to do her job and to lead this country. On April the 12th, 1945, Franklin Delano Roosevelt died at his home in Warm Springs, Georgia. At four o'clock on that afternoon, Harry S. Truman was sworn in as the 33rd President of the United States. In just three months, he would make the decision and give the order to drop the atomic bomb on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. At his swearing-in ceremony on that afternoon of April the 12th, Harry Truman read this verse of scripture. Give me wisdom, give me understanding to, grow, to lead this thy so great a people. So a king and a queen and the president of the United States, leaders of some of the greatest countries on earth, at a time in their life, they ask for wisdom. They ask for guidance. That's what I ask for today. Not for me, but for David Allen, for Hope Haywood, Kenny Kidd, Maxton McDowell, Hal Johnson, all these folks that are working for you here and making decisions every day, indirectly or directly, will affect your life. And so that's what I ask for today, that God would give us the wisdom that we might know the difference between good and bad, and we might make those correct decisions that will move this forward, bring some normalcy to our life, and uh, some normalcy into our homes and all across this county. Again, I thank you for the privilege to serve you. It's been my honor, and uh, I covet your prayers every day as we go forward. So thank you for watching today, and you'll hear from others that play various roles in this process. May God bless you. Thank you. Hi, Susan Hayes, Randolph County Public Health. Sadly, yesterday we received notification of the fourth death in our county. Our positive case count today is 255. In the future, as we are able to gradually live stay-at-home policies, it's likely um, physical distancing practices will change as a result. And it's also expected that we'll see more exposures to coronavirus because of that. I want to remind everyone that many details about COVID-19 remain unknown. What we do know for now is that in order to save lives and keep people healthy, we need to continue to stay at home as much as possible, practice physical and social distancing to stop the spread of coronavirus. 
please be considerate of those around you and those in your family, those you work with, those you love. Thank you for all you are doing to protect the people of Randolph County. Take care. Hi, good morning. My name is Kathy and I'm here representing Randolph County Public Health and actually the WIC program um, in public health. We wanted to let the public know that we are still open and we are providing services for our participants. Um, as you may or may not know, the WIC program stands for Women, Infant and Children Supplemental Nutrition Program. Um, we service pregnant, postpartum, breastfeeding women and children up to age of five. We are currently teleworking from home and we are doing certifications over the phone and from the office. Um, we have three locations, but right now during the COVID-19 situation, we are providing um, only one office that's open, which is the Asheboro site, which is at the health department. Um, there have been several wavered items that the state has put in place so that people can uh, make it, so that we can make it convenient for people to receive services. The state program has uh, waived the physical presence um, and the documentation of proof of income and address. We also um, certify folks mostly through adjunct ed eligi eligibility, excuse me, uh, which is people that may have Medicaid or SNAP services or food stamps. Um, we are accepting new clients. Um, all you have to do is call. Our number is 336-318-6171. And we also have available for you um, services that are provided from nutrition staff that are providing um, nutrition and breastfeeding support uh, through teleworking. And um, we are offering curbside service, which means that if you need service immediately and you need uh, to be able to get your food benefits that we're offering curbside, you can drive up to the health department and we will come out and help you um, and explain to you how to use and uh, retrieve your benefits. Uh, so we look forward to working with you and we encourage you to call us, come in, um, and we will do whatever we can to provide the services for you. Thank you. Hola, me llamo Pilar Martínez. Trabajo para el programa de WIC. Um, es un programa de mujeres, bebés y niños menores de 5 años. Estamos localizados en el Departamento de Salud. Um, estamos aceptando nuevos clientes. Um, debido al COVID-19, estamos haciendo todos los servicios por teléfono. Um, el personal está teletrabajando desde su hogar para proporcionarles um, servicios de nutrición y lactancia. Um, uh, por este momento han renunciado la presencia física y de documentación y ingresos. La mayoría de los clientes um, están elegidos adjuntamente por recibir Medicaid y estampillas de comida. Um, si necesitan los servicios inmediatamente. Este, estamos proporcionando servicios de, por correo y de um, levantar a la banqueta. Um, so llámenos para hacer sus citas y poderles proporcionar estos um, servicios al 336-318-6171. Gracias. Thanks, Kathy Eilig, for that update on the public health efforts to continue providing services to those women, infants, and children at nutritional risk in our Randolph County community. Thank you and all the staff at the Department of Public Health, some of which you can see through the window behind me here at the County Emergency Operations Center. Thank all of you for the services you provide our community on a daily basis. As of today, May 5th, 2020, Randolph County has produced 13 videos that are designed to provide our citizens with up-to-date information on the status of the coronavirus pandemic. They are also designed to provide you with information regarding how your Randolph County government is organizing and operating to ensure the continuity of county services during this challenging times of the coronavirus pandemic. 
To date, these YouTube videos have generated over 18,000 views, not counting shares. In addition to regular updates from the Chairman of the County Commissioners and the Public Health Director, the videos have also included the following updates from Randolph County. Sheriff Seabolt, our Emergency Services Director, the Public Schools, the Register of Deeds, Risk Management, Animal Services, Economic Development, our Veteran Service Officer, Cooperative Extension Service, County Inspections Department, and special informational presentations from our Randolph County Public Health Educators and Nurses. Our next video will be this Thursday, May the 7th, and will usually be posted on the Randolph County website around 1 p.m. Our featured guest on Thursday will be Mark Hensley, Executive Director of the Randolph County Senior D Adults Association. Mark will talk about how the Senior Adults Association is partnering with, uh, with organizations and, and people during this pandemic to make sure our seniors are safe and remembered. Thank all of you again for spending time with us today.